But what a blessing today has been, brothers and sisters. The rededication, the things that are happening in the church, the growth of this church, the obedience to our Lord and Savior. I tell you what, we is, it don't get much better than this unless this church is overflowing with people. And that's coming. I believe that's coming. Because if we, if we as a congregation, if we as the church preach, walk, and act the truth of God to show the gospel of Jesus Christ, people are going to want to say, I need that. I want that. And then they'll know, like in the song, I'm doing this for you. Um, what a wonderful day. Wonderful day. Go to the Lord in prayer right quick. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here on this hill today to worship you to hear your word, and to do what we need to do by your commandments and follow your love and your direction. Lord, let this message, let this message be true to the heart and use me as your vessel to say what you need to, need to be heard. And Father, forgive us where we, we fall. But today, let us rejoice in our strength that you get us, you give us and let us be strong, not weak. Warriors for you in your name I pray. Amen. amen. We're going to be in 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 29 today, brothers and sisters. Sometimes I'll start off with a poem or a story, but today I want to get to right to it. Because this is so important today. Are we up? Okay. You know, the, the Antichrist, we've heard about this. In, in our lessons and, and, and studying the Bible and we've heard about it all our lives but the Antichrist, brothers and sisters there's an Antichrist here and it's quoted in the Bible saying they would be here they and they're here you know the Antichrist are all around and they're around us all the time and many of them whether you believe it or not are pretty doggone nice aren't they? deceived be not if they're going to be saved, our radically calling is not to be nice Christians, but sacrificiously loving Christians. And John teaches us how to do this. We're going to look out for the nice Christian or the nice Antichrist. That's what this message is going to be on today. Because God says, "Don't be deceived in the end times," and we're there. We're there, brothers and sisters. The nice Antichrist, and uh, we can't put an exact picture in our minds together of this historical situation of which John is addressing in the Scripture. But it's very obvious there's been some, some sort of breakup in the church. Y'all see that now? Oh, I do. And I'm talking to, I see things like in California, John MacArthur's church. California, they told him they can't worship, they can't sing, they can't come together, they can't worship God in that building. And even if they go to the parking lot, now they're taking the parking lot away. The Antichrist do not want you to worship Jesus Christ. Antichrist is different people. People now, not just one horned devil that's going to come get you. And that's a, that's a deceitful thing too. I'm going to skip back just a little bit. Satan, when he fell from heaven, was the most beautiful creation God had ever made. He's not a long tail, red face horned devil with a pitchfork. Don't you be, don't be deceived. He's going to fool a lot of people. But we can't put, we just can't place what's happening in the churches back then, but it's happening now today. And uh, one group that stayed with the church, and John continues to write to them to encourage them to stick out with, stick with faith, stay together, stand strong in God, and look to their relationship with Jesus and hold firm. Amen? Amen. And that they may know they have eternal life. Do you know that today, brothers and sisters? Do you know you sure? Do you know that you know you got eternal life with Jesus Christ? Well, listen, another group who he's addressing here, we see this today also in other churches, they've gone away from the church. And this group is causing problems. Yeah. Causing problems. They're trying to persuade others to join them. They're causing the faithful to doubt. They're causing the faithful to have questions about things. And John's warning against this because they are a problem. And don't you think we don't have that today? As it gets closer to the end day, the end time, the end hour, this is going to get more prevalent. This is going to get stronger. More people are going to fall to deception. Not just by the old 
spooky booger man antichrist, but by the nice antichrist also. That's something we have to really pay attention to, brothers and sisters. And it comes to a collision point in our text today in the verses we're going to go with. John 2, 18 through 29. And uh, let me read that to you right here. Little children, this is deceptions in the last hour. And we're there. Yeah. We are there. You can take my word for it. You don't have to. But I'm telling you, we're closer and closer. And we're there. Little children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now. Many Antichrists have come by which we know that is the last hour. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you visualize it now? They went out from us. They went out from us, but they were not with us. Listen down. I'm going to get this in text in a little bit. I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty of what this verse is talking about. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were in us. We're in us. We're in us. They went out and made manifest. They're gathering troops. They're gathering sides against God. Whether they know it or not. And some of them do. Some of them are just beginning to learn. Let me get to verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and know all things. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is in the truth. We cannot bury off the truth. You understand? You hear me? I don't hear amens out there. Y'all don't make me come out there. Let's get lively for the Lord. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. And he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. What is that telling us? It's getting slack. You're getting a little bit of apost apost it with apostasy. You keep turning away from God a little bit. A little bit. I don't know if it's apostatic or what the right word is, but apostasy is bad in the churches. Falling away. From knowing Jesus. Falling away from following Jesus. Hmm. What is it about the Word which makes our ears pick up and increase our interest? Listen to me now. Watch out for the Antichrist. This is what we do as Christians, don't we? Amen. We are on the lookout for some individual that embodies, embodies everything that is against Christ, against Jesus. This may sound like a, a small problem. It may sound like a monumental problem. But brothers and sisters, it is a huge monumental problem. And we cannot fall. We cannot fail. We cannot be deceived by the Antichrist. Over the centuries, there have been a number of individuals who were identified as the Antichrist. And you all want to shake your head on this one? If we're Nero, okay, who ruled Rome from 37 to 67 AD, he was a popular choice to be called the Antichrist. Not without reason, because he persecuted Christians so ruthlessly that even people who were against Christianity, Christianity sided with Christians against his barbaric actions. It was that bad. Now, here's some of y'all, I'm going to say this, and this is a joking type deal, but my little granddaughter Tula, she comes up here pretty regular about every other week as she can, but she asked him one time, she said, Papa, what do you call Christians that have left our church? What do you call people that have left our church? And I said, backsliders, baby. And she said, what do you call the new people that come into our church from wherever? And I said, converts, honey. Yeah. That's what they are, but they're still coming to hear the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, here's one I should say, the Pope. Oh, some of y'all have been there. Or should I say the multiple number of popes? They're the all-time most popular contender for the title of Antichrist. And the accusations always made by a Protestant who has assumed the office of the papacy is the office of the Antichrist. i got one man down here who used to be there. Now he rides for the brand of Jesus. Okay. People in the old days, they said, I say old days, back in the, in the 40s, Hitler, for many obvious reasons, was called the Antichrist. What a terrible man he was. And now, during the COVID-19 that we have amongst us right now, the Antichrist 
and the identification of the Antichrist has been used because of this COVID-19. That's the Antichrist deal. Well, let's see on a little bit. But here's where we need to be real careful, brother and sister. A little careful look closely at Scripture. We do this because there are only four verses, four, in the Scripture which mentions the Antichrist. You just thought there's much more than that, huh? Yeah. And all of them were in John's epistles. We read two of them today. I'm going to tell you the first one is 1 John 2, verse 18. We said that a while ago. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come amongst us. And we know now that this is the last hour. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. That has a double-edged sword meaning right there, brother and sister. We'll get into that in just a minute. I'm good about putting that horse before the cart. Or the cart before the horse. I'll get it right in a minute. I'll get excited. And I can go, Joe said, get it right, preacher. That's our wagon man down there. In the other two verses, 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, write this down. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Right. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and now is already in the world. That's up to chapter 4. We're skipping some now. 2 John, verse 7. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person, any such person is the deceiver and Antichrist their self. These are the verses. That's it. That's the four verses written in Scripture. It mentions Antichrist. And Paul talks about the man of lawlessness in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, but not the Antichrist. In the book of Revelations now, you all read the book of Revelations. We'll be getting into it a little bit more. We've been into it some, but they talk about beasts, dragons, demons, satanic legions, and false prophet, but no mention of the Antichrist in Revelation. The Antichrist, here is where I'm getting to, is not one specific individual who appears at one specific point in time. Antichrist is a collective. I love this word. But when I go to collect cattle, that means I'm grabbing them all. But a collective, it refers to a group of people who have come in the past who are still coming, who deny that Jesus has come in the flesh. Now does that mean they didn't say there was no Jesus? I'm telling you what I think, brother and sister. I feel like God's telling me, I feel this in my heart, that those people like that, they've heard of Jesus, they know of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. They can do things their way. And then they go to church on Sunday and do things His way. This ain't happening. Saying, That's the Antichrist. You fit in that category? Step on your own toes. Woo! I'm telling you. Which means the main criteria for Antichrist identification is not a moral one. Now listen, you're not the Antichrist just because you persecute the church and put Christians to death. Paul did that. Oh, let's go back in history just a little bit. But he wasn't the Antichrist, amen? You're not the Antichrist just because you have behavior which morally breaks the laws of Scripture. If that's the case, all of us could be identified as Antichrist at some point in our lives. Amen. Yeah. Moral deficiency is not the main criteria for Antichrist identification. The main criteria for ID is the theological one. That's where we get down into the soul part of this, brothers and sisters. They deny that Jesus is the Christ. They deny that. They don't acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Which makes, which is what makes Antichrist ID so difficult. But because in many cases, those who fit the scripture criteria of being Antichrist, well, they actually don't seem to be such terrible people. And John draws our attention to this reality in 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Let me read them again. Verse 18, dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many have come. Brothers and sisters, this whole world's full of them. Yeah. So is Meridian, Texas. Oh. So is Clifton. Yeah. So is 
so is the state, so is the world. They went out from us, but they didn't really belong to us. For if they belonged to us, they would remain with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. And what I'm telling you now, they, they want religion. I didn't say relationship. They want religion. And they get them a big dose of it on Sunday. And then they'll talk it a little bit. They'll think, oh, I'm, I'm good. I got this covered. I know Jesus Christ. No, no, you know of Jesus Christ. They know of Jesus Christ. Because it takes a whole lot in a relationship to walk straight and forward with Jesus Christ. With the blessings He gives you and the direction He gives you. Amen? Do mm. you hear what John really said? He said, really here? Many Antichrists to come. And they went out from us. Now here's, here's where it's going to hit home right here, brothers and sisters. They were on the door welcoming us in the church. They'll stand at the door and welcome you in. They sat in our fellowship groups. They sat in our, in, in, in our Bible studies. They've even eaten the Lord's Supper with us. Mm. They were standing around the baptismal. They were with us and now they're not. That is Antichrist, brothers and sisters. What happened? Mm. Let's be specific. Now John ain't talking about people who were part of the Boston County Cowboy Church and who now go to the First Baptist Church or another church, uh, Anglican Church. or It, it don't matter. He's not talking about that. He's talking about those who move on from one church, from the church and from the ministry and from the faith and from Jesus. Yeah. Walk in their own path. You know, i got to stop right here. I hear this every day. Well, I wasn't getting fed at that church. What are you hungry for? You yeah. If you go to a church that preaches the truth in this Bible, right. the truth of God's Word, what else do you need? Yeah. The deserve is to be with Him. Right. To be fed the truth in the Word of God, that's what's important. Yeah. So if you're wearing your feelings on your cuff, if you think you don't have enough say-so in that church just because you've been there one day or 20 years, <coughs> you were with us and now you're apart from us. What do we do in church, brothers and sisters? We're not, we're, this building ain't the church. We Who's are. the church? We are. We are, are brothers and sisters. Amen. And uh, some people are usually been people that don't become difficult who scream against the church and, and faith every chance they get, but some do. Some will like to ease off and go to run in the mouth against a church, against a pastor. Nothing makes me matter. Nothing makes my burdens my heart any more than for someone to say, man, I loved, loved that church, but things have changed. I ain't going back to that church anymore. I'm not going to that church until they change pastor, they change leadership. I'm not quitting the church, mind you. I'm just backing off for a while. They were amongst us once, but now they're apart from us. What are you looking for in the Word of God? What are you looking for in relationship with our King and our Savior and our Lord, brothers and sisters? In fact, a lot of people, usually the ones who walk away, are basically, they continue to be pretty nice. You know what? Well, we meet them every now and then for coffee, don't we? And we can talk about all sorts of things because we, we, we have shared a history. Happens regular, don't it, guys? Meet somebody for coffee. See somebody where, well... <clears throat> You know, they ain't been coming to church, but looky here, coffee shop's full of people. Yeah. Our friends. My... Yeah. You talking about the Lord? <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm not going to go there any farther. Sometimes if we need help and we're sick, they'd come over and maybe the gals would back in my home and clean a little bit. That's what we do in this church. Or they do some washing. They cook a meal. Our meal train is great. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Someone's down in this church, and we're not going to let you go hungry if we know about it. We got a group of people that'll throw a meal together, run it to your house, and drop it off on the porch if you don't take the order. They'll knock on your door if they are. But we're going to get you fed. And when our car breaks down and we get stuck, and uh, they even loaned us their vehicles. I've been I've been a recipient of that. They help us so much. They're nice people, aren't they? Yeah. Such nice people. And we know that, that they don't believe in Jesus that He's come in the flesh. But aren't they such nice people? We see what they're doing. We kind of, okay, we go look at They're so nice. Ironically, it's because they're such nice people, they can create a huge spiritual problem in us. Oh, yeah. God, in a minute, you're going to smell what I'm stepping in. Yeah. But it's going to get there. When they invite us to their grandbaby's first birthday, 
How many of you done that? Been invited to the first birthday? You ain't never been to your grandbaby's birthday? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it's on Sunday. We'll need to miss church. Whoa. They're such nice people, though. <laughs> I think we better go. We should go, and who knows? Maybe on another occasion, we can get them to come to church. Okay? Their oldest son. Now, this is where I'm facing the dilemma with my grandbaby, because my gals are already... I got them farmed out. My daughters. Good men. But their oldest son, who's a little older than your daughter, he's such a nice boy. And he has a good job. Woo! I like him. He ain't been to church for ages, but you know our daughter, you know our daughter, she'll be able to convince him to come to church. Wouldn't that be a nice wedding? Nice, hmm? Our son and their son have so much in common, they really love playing together on the sports team. Playing basketball, football, rodeoing. Yes, the gates always seem to be on the same night as Bible study. That's why that's something to think about, brother and sister. But you know, if the boys hang out, maybe our son will give the other son a chance to show him some Jesus. That'd be nice. You notice I'm repeating nice, nice, nice here. And we want to be nice as well. So because we want to be nice, we stop. And this is, uh, you're guilty of it. A big bunch of you. We stop talking about church. We stop talking about the faith. We stop talking about Jesus. And we stop asking them to come to the ministry events because we know they'll say no anyway. Huh? Then we really don't want to cause a fuss. We love them. You know, God says love them. Are we going to be nice and let them slip away? Are we going to be nice and just be agreeable to, well, they got other things to do. Let's keep it nice. You know what nice is? I've watched my babies grow up, my grandkids, my, my daughter, my son. You ever heard of something called Teletubbies? Yeah. yeah. It's the sweetest little kid show. It's a kid's program where Tinky Winky and Dipsy and La La and Poe would go on a fun adventure in Teletubby land. You watched it yesterday, didn't you? <laughs> Listen, they roll on the ground. They run about just watching and real children on, TV, on the televisions on their bellies. They'd be watching this. They'd, my kids is like this. They'd just be, <laughs> they love it. But and when the Teletubbies greet each other, the way that they were always so nice. I mean, it's just so sweet. Drips with sweetness. Old Tinky Winky and the old pole. Well, the sun never burned you. In fact, the sun had a baby's face. The sun, the bright sun had a baby's face. Wouldn't burn you. It would make baby noises right throughout the show. Hmm. And everything in Teletubby Land was so nice. Amen? Okay. But there's one thing that tell it about Teletubby Land. It ain't real. It ain't real. It's a fantasy. There's no such thing as a nice antichrist. Brother and sister. And about those nice people we're talking about, the ones who went out from us, the ones who nicely deny that Jesus is Christ, that Jesus is not the ruling over them. This is what John says, and that's their agenda. Now, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 26, I'm writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. Listen to me. They'll do it nicely. They will. And they might not even know they're acting for an antichrist manner. But the end goal of those with an antichrist identity is to lead, lead those who believe in Jesus away from Jesus. Pretty hard to swallow, isn't it? But it's nice. They're nice people. Anything. I'm talking about anything that can come up now. And in sports events is the main. Parties. Whether it's birthday parties or, or tailgate parties, lead you away from Christ. Because a lot of them happen on Sunday. There's lots of things happening on Bible study night. Slacking off from true worship. Whatever can lead a person away from Christ, that's what's happening. That's anti-Christ, brothers and sisters. Anti-Christ. When you put something else above the priority before Jesus. Where you at in your life? Hmm. And for the sake of being nice to nice people who deny Jesus is Christ, I have seen a generation transition out of the church and go into the world. I have seen a generation and they were led astray. For the sake of having their daughter 
marry a nice man. I've seen well-intentioned parents now praying continuously for their daughter who has been led astray. It's happened. All too late realizing that dating and courting and becoming girlfriend, boyfriend is not an evangelist, an evangelism technique. Not in today's time. For the sake of having nice mateship, I've seen the phrase, it'll give them a chance to talk about Jesus. Turn into a phrase, they're never going to quit talking about sports. Yeah. <laughs> Priority above our Lord, brothers and sisters. This might seem like a really out there thing to talk about this morning. You know, after we've been apart for so long with this COVID deal, we're, just, we're now building back up the kingdom of God. And thank you, new people, for coming in here, for coming in here. And Lord, I pray that this, this church fills with people who are searching for salvation, searching for a Savior, a King of Kings. You know, we've been unable to really get it strong for 17 weeks. I believe that's how long it is. And for some who haven't been in church at all since this started. <clears throat> A third of the year, brothers and sisters, one third of the year we haven't been able to church together like we should have. Now, and, and, and this is the verse. Here's what I've learned after preaching for over 12 years. God plans the text, not me. Hear me? A day like today is a chance for new, brand new, to be renewed, to be reminded, to have a fresh start, to hear loud and clear what our main calling is. And do you know what our main calling is? Let me tell you, it's going to sound really strange, but I'm going to tell you what it is. It is. I'm going to tell you what it's not. Let me back up just a little bit. I like this little deal here. Our, it's not our main calling to be nice. Oh, you like that, don't you, Marty? And he just said he just uncrossed his leg and swelled up. You know, we can be too nice, but if God didn't call us to be nice. By allowing things to happen in our lives. By allowing things to happen in our country. Amen. That's not what God's calling is for us. Being nice will not make one scrap of eternal difference to anyone who denies that Jesus has come in the flesh. So many people, so many people in America, people we know were part of the church in the past. And this nation, this nation has a past spiritual heritage, brothers and sisters. There's more, there's more important things to do now than worship. What happened to our past? The church failed. That's right. The church allowed this by being nice, by not wanting to argue, by sticking your head in the sand. Us, God's children. If you stick your head in the sand, what's exposed to get a kick in? Huh? Be nice. Well, it's getting less. It's getting less and less. There's a growing antagonism in our country, in this world for Christianity. There are literally millions of people who went out and who didn't really belong. God, save them. Love on them, brothers and sisters. John's warning here is not to stay away from them. It's what he's warning is don't be led astray by them. Does that make sense? Don't run off and hide from them. Don't kick them out the door. Don't tell them don't come back. Don't be led astray by them. Keep on preaching. Keep on showing. Keep on walking the will of the Father. Amen. Jesus, let Him set the agenda. Hmm. The agenda is not be nice. I'm going to tell you what. No one, no one is saved by nice Christians who don't believe Jesus. He's the only one that can save them. No one is saved by nice Christians who do not lead to Jesus. You hear me? You got to get strong on this. The agenda is live out your spirit anointing. Follow the truth. Acknowledge the Son and remain in the kingdom. Steadfast. Be confident and most of all, be unashamed. Unashamed. And uh, this just little things, brothers and sisters, I'm, I, I beg for you to try this. Every time me... My wife, my family, my friends, we go, an example, to a restaurant. Or we go to a cafe, which that's a we talk for the good place. <laughs> we go down to the local cafe, but it don't matter. If we go to Delmonico's, right. we're going to pray and bless that meal. Yeah. And we're going to ask the servant, yeah. server, 
to join with us. And you know when we first started this, there was a lot of, oh, y'all go ahead. And they went. Now there's, now we're going to, like Johnny's Cafe. I'm going to brag on them because we go in there, the gal puts our food down, she goes, are y'all ready? Right. That's our servant. Our servant. A servant for God. Unashamed we pray. And now more and more people will bow their heads sitting close to us. It's getting more prevalent. The Word of God is spreading. Amen. Our actions are spreading. Amen. Children of God and not unashamed. We're unashamed to show people and tell people about Him. But our actions, actions without faith is worthless. We get it, brothers and sisters. We get it. Mm. I'm going to close with this. That's, this is the agenda. This is our main calling. I call it radical calling. It's a transformational calling. Run with perseverance. Run with perseverance. Step out. Hit a look. Don't stroll along with your hands in your pockets. Coming into the family of Jesus brings you into a battle. You know, before you had Jesus and some of these folks, the Antichrist, he didn't give a rip about them. Still don't. Antichrist. He got them. Yes. But when you give your heart and soul to Jesus and you ask Him to come into your life as your Savior, Savior, then the devil got you in the crosshairs. Yeah. He ain't going to have none of that. Yeah. He read the book. He knows what the end's like. Yeah. He ain't going to win, but he don't care, but he's going to take you down to the brinks of hell with him. That's, right. That's his goal. Jesus gives us, brothers and sisters, the armor of God. Amen? <laughs> not the dress, not the, not the nightgown of grandma. <laughs> Woo! The call to faith is radical. Transformation focused. It's like that because it's the only way to eternal life. Brother, sister, there ain't no other way. Listen to me. There's no other faith. There's no other road. That's the bigger picture, which means we just have to stop being nice and allowing things in this old world. Instead, we have to be loving just as Jesus was loving. I'm going to close with this scripture. Write this down. 1 John 3.16 this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Uh-huh. The world don't need nice Christians. It needs loving Christians. Let's go out and do what we need to do so that those who have gone away from us can come back. They'll see. They'll desire that. And they know that they belong because we all belong to God. It's up to us, our choice of whether to be in the family. I don't know any other way to put it. I'm adopted. I'm adopted into the family of Christ. Amen. And I pray you are too. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, this glorious moment that we can be here with you to worship you as we should be worshiping you, to give you glory give you all the glory for what you have done for us and for bringing us into eternal salvation by choice that we made to love you back and to be obedient. Father, I'm just, I'm simple, I'm plain, but I know that I know you are real. You sent your Son here, Jesus Christ, in the flesh to take on the troubles, the sin, and the bad things that happen in this world to your people. He took this in love for us, Father. And there's someone here today, someone here today that hasn't stepped over that, that, that line, still away from, from the Lord, but knowing, <laughs> Father, that you came as our, as our chance for eternity. I pray that that person or persons here today search your heart with sincerity, complete sincerity, pray this prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ. But it has to come from you, brother and sister. It has to come from your heart in earnest need and desire to have Jesus Christ as the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior to you. Father, I'm a sinner. Father, I, heard, I hear the messages. And I should have been a lot farther up this road than I ever have been. But Father, now I know I can't do this anymore. I, Father, I don't want to be 
cast into the fiery lake. I don't want to be without you. I don't want to be totally alienated from you, Father. And I believe with all my heart and soul, Jesus, that you came to this earth from the comforts of heaven. You came here for me. For me, Father. And you took the beatings, the pain, the persecution, the, you felt the sin. You took all of that on your shoulders and you died on that cross to provide me a way of forgiveness and to provide me, to provide me, me, Father, to be with you in eternity. And I make that choice today. Father, please, forgive me of my sins. I believe you rose from that cross and, and you ascended to heaven and you promised you would make that way for me. You promised that you would have a place for me to be with you if we believed and I do. Father, I believe Thank you for loving me. Let me be obedient to you, Father. Please help me to be straight and, and walk the narrow way, Father, with you guiding me. Father, help me. Help me study the Word. Help me understand. Reveal to me more in the truth of the Gospel. And Father, I love you. Please forgive me. Be my King, my Lord, and my Savior. And I ask you these things, Jesus Christ, in your precious holy name. Amen? Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, come back next Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Talk to them. Quit being nice. Tell them short up about your Savior. Maybe they want some of it. Some of Him. Amen? Amen. See you then. Love y'all.